Hello everyone. This is lecture 10 on fixed point theory. So today I am going to explain some general definitions in topological space and the comments on Rar's fixed point theorem. So first I am going to explain what do you mean by a topological space. A topological space is a set X equipped with the collection of its subset. So let's suppose this is denoted by T. So this collection must contains the collection must contains the whole set X and the set empty set Phi. Secondly, if there are some members, then their union must belongs to this and their finite intersection must belongs to the same collection T. Then this collection is a topology of the set X and the set X together with this topology is called the topological space. So what is basically topological space? We are given a set X. We take its subsets in such a way that it satisfies this three. Means the whole set. So we are taking a collection of the subsets of the set X and call this collection as T and this T must satisfy these three means this collection must contain the set X and the empty set. If there are some members then their arbitrary union is also belongs to this right arbitrary union but finite intersection. So then this collection is a topology on the set X and X together with this topology is called the topological space. Right. This is an important point that all the members of this topology they are considered to be open set. So they are open in X. And since we know that the whole set the empty set they are open. So this collection is clearly they are open. Right. If U alphas are open we know that arbitrary union is also open. So unions is also open. If two sets are open, then we know that finite intersection is also open. So therefore, each member of this collection is an open set. So we have to consider each open, uh, member of T to be an open set. So this is a definition of open set in the topological space that every member of the topology is an open set. So this point is clear. What do you mean an open set? Open in topology open sets are the basic sets means they are the members of the topological space infinite union finite intersections the whole set and the empty set they all are the open sets. Now closed set a set is said to be closed if its complement is open. So that means if the complement is a member of the topology right then the set will become the closed set. So clearly the whole set and the empty set both are closed. Okay. So another way we can say a set is said to be closed if it is arbitrary intersection or finite union of the closed sets. Now the next definition is convex. We are taken G which is a subset of Rn. This set G is said to be convex. If we consider any two points from this set G. If all the points lying on the straight line segment joining the points G1 and G2 or in the figure I have denoted this by X and Y. So they are all these members lie in G itself. Then that set is convex set. Right. So here this is an example of not convex set because if I consider the point X and Y here and if I join a straight line segment then this segment then the all points lying on this straight line segment is not lie in G right some points lie outside this set so therefore this is not convex so whenever we have a hole or a uh, cut then 
that sets are not convex sets basically okay now the next is an open cover a collection of open sets in rn is an open cover for the set a if the union of all sets in this collection has a as a subset means let's suppose we have to find an open cover for the set a and this set a is any subset of r right and we are considering any open sets in this rn and we considering that set as to be a collection a okay now we take the union of all these collections if union of all these collections cover the set a then that cover is said to be the open cover because here each set is open right and when we take the union of all these open that is also open and this collection covers the set a means a is subset of all these so therefore this will become the open cover for the set a okay so we are given a set a corresponding to this set a we find such open sets which covers this a when we take the union of all these so they cover the set a so that then that collection is the open cover now the next is the definition of compact so let's suppose we are given any topological space so if every open covering of any set a contains a finite sub cover then a is said to be compact so what is the definition of compact basically so we are given a set in this topological space right we get the open covers we get the open sets which uh, and take the union which cover this set a right but if we remove the extra covers and if we get the finite sets and their union which covers the whole set a so means if a is covered by finite union of open sets right so that means every open cover of a is reducing to some finite sub cover so if we can find out the finite sub cover of any set a then that a set will become the compact set and in set of real numbers a set is said to be compact if it is closed and if it is bounded so we can always find out its finite sub covers finite open cover now the next is the continuous so we are given two topological spaces one is xt1 other is yt2 so let's suppose we are given a function going from x to y then this function is said to be continuous if for any open set in y right any open set in y inverse image of this open set is also open in x right in other words you can say now just see what are these uh, the uh, the points of y they are basically some f of x1 f of x2 and so on right so if the distance between that two points is very very small right so whenever we have the points which are very near in x so we say the f set f to be continuous okay so whenever we have an open set in y its if its inverse image is also open in x then we say the function is continuous and what are the open sets in x and y basically they are the members of t1 and t2 respectively now the next is what do you mean by an open map let we are having two topological spaces with topologies t1 and t2 
and we are having a function mapping which is going from x to y then this mapping is said to be an open map if for any open subset of x its image subset is also open in y so every open set over here maps to open set in y so that will become an open map so that function that mapping is an open that basically send every open set to open set so that mapping is open mapping now bijection a function f going from x to y is said to bijection if it is injective and surjective means 1 1 and on to now what do you mean by 1 1 whenever f of x1 is equal to f of x2 then this implies the points are same x1 is equal to x2 in on to means for all y belonging to the codomain there exists some point in domain such that f of x is equal to y so there is a image right of every point in the set x pre image sorry so there so that point that function is said to be on to now what do you mean by homomorphism a homomorphism is a function which is continuous open map and bijective right so if any function any mapping is continuous open map and bijective then that mapping that function is said to be homomorphism so in homomorphism basically if uh, we are given any f going from x to y and they are homomorphism then many properties are invariants now the next is broad fixed point theorem this what this theorem states that any continuous function sending a compact convex set onto itself contains at least one fixed point right so we are having a function which is continuous which is defined on a compact set which is defined on a convex set to itself then there must exist at least one fixed point so that this mapping must contain at least one fixed point right so what type of this mapping is this type of mapping is this is continuous mapping defined the domain and codomain both are same and the domain is compact and convex set right then there must exist at least one fixed point so what does it mean means in topology it means no matter how you stretch you twist you deform unless you tear it right so whatever you do in topology there always one point that ends up in the original location so we are given any uh, you can say um, closed surface bounded surface right uh, you just twist it stretch it whatever you do deform it okay but there always exist one point which ends up in the uh, up in its original location so this is a you can say meaning of this broad fixed point theorem that if we are having continuous functions defined on compact convex set so we always have a point where f of x is equal to x means this mapping is invariant under that point now the simplest examples of compact convex sets are a closed interval in case of real numbers in one dimension in two dimension is a closed disk so it is a region which is enclosed by the circle all the point lie inside and itself and the boundary also and any convex region in the plane right so if you, you take any two points the segment also lie entirely in that set so these are some simplest examples of compact convex sets now what are the comments of broad fixed point theorem there are many different proofs of broad fixed point theorem but the preconditions they are very important 
so what are the precondition that function should be continuous it should be defined on a compact convex set now just see how for example if we consider a function x plus 1 on the set of real numbers then clearly this function is continuous clearly this function this set is convex and this set is closed but it is not bounded right it is closed but it is not bounded so therefore this is not compact so it is not compact right so it does not satisfy the conditions of Brauer's expand theorem and you can see this function has no fixed point so if you write down x plus 1 is equal to x your x x will be cancelled out and 1 is equal to 0 which is not true right or other explanation if you draw the graph of this function it is a line which is shifted through a region right so this line never cuts y is equal to x line okay so these lines are parallel lines they never cut so therefore there is no fixed point right so if preconditions are not satisfied then we are not sure about the fixed point so here this is an example of a function where this function is continuous the domain is convex closed but not bounded means, means not compact so therefore they, this is not having a fixed point now just see one more example let's suppose we are given a function which is defined on open interval so let's suppose it is defined on minus 1 to 1 and the function is given by x plus 1 by 2 now clearly this function is continuous the space is convex this is an open interval minus 1 to 1 this is bounded but this is not closed so again it is not compact right and now find out its fixed point so we equate it equal to x we get 2x is equal to x plus 1 so we get x is equal to plus 1 it is a fixed point of this function but this point doesn't belong to the domain right so therefore this mapping have no fixed point in this domain rather taking open interval if we consider the closed interval then this set will become compact and clearly this has a fixed point now just even more example let's suppose we are given a mapping going from d to d where this d is a unit circle so it is a unit circle means all the points lying on the boundaries right no point lying inside it it's not a disk it is a circle unit circle and let's suppose we are given a function which is defined like f of x is equal to minus x so clearly this function is continuous this unit circle is closed this is bounded but it is not convex because if you take any two points lying on the boundaries you join the line segment there are so many points which lie on this line segment but that doesn't belong to the set t so this there is a hole so this set is this unit circle is not convex now just find out its fixed point its fixed point is 0 and also 0 doesn't belong to this domain D because 0 is at here at the center but this D is a unit circle so it is a set of all those points which lie on this boundary only so again the function has no fixed point so preconditions of the broad fixed point theorem they are very important if any one of them fails then the function may or may not have fixed point so in the next lecture i will explain the broad fixed point theorem proof in one dimension